My name's William Nicholson, and I'm here to talk about my new novel for teenagers, which is called Rich and Mad. All the books I've written up to now for young adults, as the Americans call them, teenagers, um, have been in fantasy worlds that I've invented. This is my first book that is actually set in the real world, and I've done this because I wanted to write about love. I wanted to write specifically about what happens between a boy and a girl as they discover each other and learn to love each other. I am one of those people who's always wanted to be a writer from the age of five, but it's very difficult to make a living as a writer. So when I was um, coming out of university um, with one completed novel behind me and another novel in my brain, I went into the BBC and I worked in television for many years and continued writing novels, all of which failed. So um, anybody who's interested in becoming a writer should know that it can be a long, hard slog. And uh, I became successful as a writer via television, which hadn't been my original idea. But my heart has always been in the books. And I came back into book writing via writing for young people, rather to my surprise. And this is my latest book. When I decided to write a love story, obviously I had to decide who are my main characters and why, if you like, do they not love each other? Because if you've got a story, uh, a plot, you've got to have something stopping people loving each other before they end up loving each other. Um, and the way I, I went, which was uh, typical of me and anybody who's read my books will, will recognize this, the boy is rather shy, rather timid. Um, he's not a, a, a pushy, hot kind of guy. Uh, and the girl in her own way is quite insecure and um, she's not a, a, a gorgeous, hot, cool totty. She's, um, she's an interesting, thoughtful, attractive but not gorgeous girl. So in a sense they're the male and female equivalent of each other. And, and being not the coolest kids on the block, inevitably the people who they yearn after are the cool kids. And so you've got a story where Rich is obsessed with gorgeous Grace, a girl in, in his year. And Maddie is, uh, believes that she's got something going with Joe Finnegan, who's really terrific. And they are, in fact, both mistaken. And what happens humiliates them. And in the process of being humiliated and hurt and made to feel they're useless, they befriend each other. And in the process of befriending each other, they discover each other. And without even realizing it, the friendship gradually turns into something more. What I've tried to do is to weave in and out of that plot all sorts of insights about love and what makes love work, what makes attraction work, why we make the mistakes we do. But I realized that I couldn't do that without going into the sexual side of their feelings. I can imagine some parents or, or, or teachers saying, why write for 13-year-olds and up about sexual activity? They're not ready for it. Um, why expose them to this? I, I think that's not true. I think our teenage children are exposed massively to sexual images all around, on the streets, in advertisements, in, in their culture. Um, they're also, and a lot of people don't realize this, exposed to it on the internet and uh, uh, pornography on the internet is freely available and my uh, information is that practically all teenagers have at least had a look. The boys a great deal, the girls a little bit for curiosity. So we're not talking about um, innocent children frolicking in the countryside. We're talking about kids who are puzzled about this thing called sex which they're waking up to. And what is there on offer for them? Um, there's very little that actually tells them the truth about sexual experience. And what I wanted very much was to write about love in sex, how, how love transforms sex, rather than leaving the field to the loveless pornographers. I think Rich and Mad is a book for any teenager 13 or up who is puzzled about how love and sex is going to work for them and anybody who likes to read a love story. It is, in the end, a straightforward love story which has a happy ending, I might as well tell you now. Um, and I think that kids who are 
wanting to know the truth about love as opposed to the, the celebrity version or the pornography version will really enjoy Rich and Mad. My name's William Nicholson and I'm going to read you a short extract that comes near the end of my new novel for teenagers, Rich and Mad. They were so close that Maddy could feel his heart beating and the shivering all down his body. Their lips searched and nuzzled each other, still gentle, still respectful, but growing bolder with each passing moment. They both had their eyes closed. Then his lips moved to kiss her neck, her cheek, her temple. She lay still and let him explore her, while the feeling inside her grew and grew. He lifted his lips away. She opened her eyes. He was looking at her, and silent tears were rolling down his cheeks. I'm so happy, he said. All at once, the feelings broke within her, and she began to sob. She clung to him, pressing her face against his chest, and cried and cried. All the grief and the hurt came streaming out of her, in a flood she couldn't control. The loss of Joe, the loss of her father, the loss of all the love she'd wanted so much and now would never have. She cried because she knew she would always love more than she was loved. She cried for all the hurt to come. She held Rich tight and she cried in his arms. He said nothing and made no move to stop her. Slowly the wave of emotion passed. She brushed the tears from her eyes with the back of her hand. She found a tissue in her pocket and blew her nose. You cried too, she said in self-defense. I don't know why I did that. But she did know. Too many bad things had happened to her recently. She needed something good, and kissing Rich was good. Maddy, he said. He kissed her softly. Yes, she said. Me too.